stone, paper, scissors. I'm sure you've played this game at some point in your life. Now, as you all know, stone, paper, and scissors each have their strengths and weaknesses. For example, a scissor is effective against paper, but not against rock. So now, when I was younger, I considered that paper was the weakest. You know, because all it could do was wrap stone. Now, how lame is that? Recently, I conducted a survey in which I asked my family and friends about which one of the three they preferred. Now, the results were more unipolar than I expected, with approximately 91% of the people said that they preferred stone. 9% said they preferred scissor, and no one said that they preferred paper. Now, the results are really interesting because they point towards a certain prejudice present in society. Now, it might not be as important as world peace, but it is equally serious. Now, what many of us do not realize is the beauty that lies entrapped within a single piece of paper. And hopefully, at the end of my talk, you will walk out of these doors with a different perspective. So today, I am going to be talking about origami and my journey so far. So as you probably know, uh, origami is the Japanese art of folding paper. Now, uh, we fold paper every day, don't we? But do we quite understand what it is? Now, folding paper changes the memory of paper. In more technical terms, folding changes the configuration of the paper molecules, and this causes paper to behave differently and possess certain different physical properties. Now, there are several unique perspectives through which this change in configuration can be observed. And uh, one of them is mathematics. Now, the reason why mathematics offers a very unique perspective on origami is because origami, it uh, deviates from Euclidean geometry. Now, I know all this sounds like jargon, but please just uh, bear with me for a minute. So, Euclidean geometry is basically the geometry of a plane, the kind of stuff that we did in fifth grade. Now, origami involves folding this plane, and it causes intersection of two axes. And it is this intersection which causes paper to behave a bit differently. For example, trisection of an angle. Now, the next time you trisect an angle, uh, remember me and uh, remember this. One of the most accurate ways of trisecting an angle is through a series of origami folds. Uh, this is the folding pattern for a trisection. And, uh, and another interesting fact is that you can add, you can subtract, you can multiply, you can divide, and even solve quadratic and cubic expressions using origami. Now, how cool is that? So next time you go out there and buy a calculator worth $100, just keep in mind that you can do the same thing with a piece of paper worth two cents. So uh, my journey with origami started two years ago when uh, one of my relatives uh, developed this condition called ischemia. Now, ischemia is caused due to the shortage of oxygen and glucose in the body, caused due to a certain defect in the blood vessels. And uh, this leads to malfunctioning of tissues. So uh, I remember when I went to visit my aunt, her arms were dark and swollen, and they were rendered nearly dysfunctional. And I remember, th uh, and, and I remember the doctor telling us that worsening of conditions could call for amputation, and that probably there was no cure. Now, this had a very big impact on me, and I thought that I should research more into ischemia and how it actually occurs and the reasons why it is caused. So as I delved deeper, I realized that the only way to make up for these damaged blood vessels was to somehow increase the efficiency of absorption and transportation of oxygen. But was there a way to do this? Now, uh, during this time, I was folding a very interesting uh, origami model by this Russian origamist called uh, Yuri Shamakov, and his model is called the Magic Ball. So I realized that his model could be tweaked a bit to actually offer an alternative design for artificial red blood cells. And it occurred to me that origami and biology could somehow be fused. Now, this was really interesting because origami till now had been a pastime, and it just had been a source of fun for me. And now what I realized was that it could offer a very interesting uh, solution to, uh, to the problem that I had in mind. So I remember uh, an anecdote from uh, back in 10th grade biology, 
when my teacher had told us that the biconcave disk-like shape of RBCs is the most optimal design for absorption and transportation of oxygen. But at that time, I had accepted this fact at face value. However, today, I found myself looking at it more critically and to actually understand how it works. So last summer, I did my research and I looked at the mathematics of this design. And I realized that this design, it has mediocre fluid dynamic properties. Now, what this means is that these RBCs cannot really flow fast in water because of the dislike shape. And it offers considerable resistance to the flow of serum or the fluid part of the blood. And it was during this time I was really thinking that my model could possibly be used to artificially manufacture RBCs. So, so uh, I, I told this idea to my parents who fortunately or unfortunately happened to be doctors. And you know, after having studied biology for more than nearly half of their lives, they dismissed my idea. Now, I went to a couple of doctors in the Asian Heart Hospital, and I also told them about my idea, and like my parents, they rejected it. So I was really sad, I was, I was frustrated, because no one was willing to believe a 16-year-old boy who had gone out to do something new. However, I was motivated to prove them wrong. So I spent the last summer writing a research paper in which I mathematically proved the validity of my model. I went on to prove that my model increases the efficiency of oxygen absorption by nearly 330.31%. And my model can flow 2.7 times faster in blood. Also, when it enters narrow tubes such as capillaries, uh, uh, my, uh, my model, due to the application of pressure, folds into this cylindrical shape which causes it to move faster in water, uh, in, in blood. Now, there seemed to be a tiny problem, and the problem was that researchers till now hadn't found a way to artificially manufacture these RBCs. And, uh, but uh, however, uh, looking at the developments and the groundbreaking work done in artificial genome production, uh, the future of artificial production of RBCs is admittedly bright. Now, I spent the current summer working at the NanoBios lab at IIT Bombay, in which I came in close contact with these drug delivery systems and drug carriers. So, effectively, what these drug delivery systems are is that they help to transport the drug to a target organ in the body so that it can effectively carry out its, uh, its effect. And it was during this time that it occurred to me that my model could offer a potential a viable model for these drug delivery systems. And I was really happy because, you know, I had come up with something really unique. So I think we all know what happened in uh, Nepal about a few months ago. So uh, what happened in Nepal was that there, were these major, uh, that there were these major tectonic disturbances caused due to a major fall line earthquake. And uh, there was a lot of chaos in the country. People, uh, people were suffering. They were getting affected. However, there was a lot of support from the international community. A lot of countries reached out to Nepal and provided food, clothing, shelter, and, and other uh, relief uh, objects. However, uh, what not many people realize is that the quality of the relief offered, especially the tents, was very minimal, and it wasn't appropriate. Now, just imagine that Amongst the tumult of tectonic disturbances and nippy weather, these people were living in these cloth tents to protect themselves. I mean, this seemed really inappropriate and it sort of had an impact on me. So I was wondering if there was a way to help these people. Was there a, an alternative model? Was there an alternative way to design these tents? So I, I, I have come up with a provisional model. So basically my model consists of this large polymer sheet. And it consists of pre-made folds so that this model can, art, can, art, can fold into the desired shape. Now, these folds consist of uh, embedded electronics. And all you have to do is pass a signal. And upon receiving the signal, a current flows through these electronics. And this current causes heat to be generated. And it is due to this heat that the polymer sheet, sheet takes the desired shape of a tent. Now, this is a, uh, this is a miniature model of, uh, this is a miniature scale of my model. And this is a project which is really close to my heart. 
and probably someday in the future, I, I wish to start manufacturing these and you know, uh, helping out the people in the affected areas. So now, finally, let's come back to rock, paper, and scissors. Now, um, so what I find extremely astonishing is that paper has the ability to transform the world that we envision around us. Origami offers several engineering solutions to the problems that vex the leading minds of the country. Origami can be used to efficiently design things ranging from this entire building to that tiny switch. Now, this is a very important stage in, the few, uh, in a mankind's history. This is a threshold period where whatever we do today affects the future generations. We continue to manufacture millions of products every day. And we are completely depleting the earth of its natural resources indiscriminately. Now, it is during this time that we need a revolution to change the way we manufacture things. And I believe that origami offers the solution. Now, imagine a plain sheet folding to reveal different stationary in instruments or folding to reveal different uh, uh, kitchen tools and, uh, and other stuff. And now, imagine your bag folding to reveal a table or a chair. This is the future of efficiency. This is the future of design. This is the future of manufacturing, which we need uh, to sort of come into our lives. And origami offers this solution. Now, finally, what I find extremely interesting, what I find extremely astonishing, is that an old, forgotten Japanese art has the solution. It has the key to a better future. Now, next time you play, you know what to pick. Big paper. Thank you.